This video shows how to create a Slurm client on ANSYS Access on Microsoft Azure. We've created the autoscaling cluster and it's in the ready state. Now we create the Linux VM with the Slurm client to send jobs to the autoscaling cluster. To create this VM, I will be following the recommended usage guide, specifically the recommended configurations by application section. Our autoscaling cluster has ANSYS Electronics Desktop and ANSYS Fluids installed. If I look under both of those sections, I can see we've created step one, autoscaling cluster is finished. Step two is a little different. Electronics Desktop uses HPC Platform Services and Fluids uses Virtual Desktop for job submission. These could be separate machines, but we could also run them on the same VM, which is what we'll be doing today. So we really, we need to go through each one, make sure that our process follows the recommendations for both. To create the VM, I'll return to my project space, which has the autoscaling cluster running. Before I begin, I want to collect a couple of pieces of information about this autoscaling cluster. One is the IP address. The other, is the mount path. So I make note of these and I'll return back to my project space where I create a new resource, virtual desktop. Continue on to select the Linux operating system and then choose my applications. There's one we'll certainly need, which is the Slurm client. This asks for the IP address. I want to demonstrate uh, something about HPC Platform Services or HPS. It has a Slurm client dependency, so if I choose HPS, the Slurm client will be automatically installed. I'll enter the IP address. Under HPC Platform Services, I will need the path to the shared storage. And then we want to add additional applications. In this case, I want to add a graphical desktop to submit to Fluent Solves, either a GNOME or a KDE environment. Once my applications are selected, select, click Next and select the hardware. In the recommendations, there's a couple different bits of advice. If I'm just using HPS, according to Electronics Desktop, then a D4, V5, or an E4, D5 is sufficient. We have two physical cores, 16 gigs of memory. Looking at the Fluent recommendations, at least eight cores is recommended. That would correspond to something like a D16, V5. So I will select this as it meets both of the minimum requirements. In most cases, you'll not need to add additional storage because the applications will use the shared storage. All I need to do is name the VM and review my choices, then create virtual desktop. As always, I can create a template as well. The first thing I want to do, and I can do this while services are still being installed, is to turn off the shutdown timers. This will prevent the VM from shutting down prematurely. The shutdown timers are a good idea for something like a, a VM for personal use, but when it's running services, you usually do not want them to shut down automatically. The VM is now in the running state, which is the final ready state. We can also confirm that the applications have all installed. Whether you're creating a new VM or restarting it, it's best to wait a few minutes after the status shows running because some of the services uh, take a few minutes to fully start up. Next to the connect button is a drop-down menu with several connection methods. Which methods are available depends on the applications that are installed. 
SSH is always available. Remote Desktop is available if GNOME or KDE are selected, and the other three are related to HPS. I will show how to use these portals to perform several administrative tasks, but before then, let's talk about the troubleshooting guide. There's a section on troubleshooting auto-scaling cluster workflows that's worth looking through. The rest of this video will cover HPS. There's a section on HPS in the recommended usage guide. This page gives a good overview. HPS stands for HBC Platform Services, a set of components designed to help manage the execution of simulations. As it relates to ANSYS Access and Microsoft Azure, HPS is used in the electronics desktop and mechanical auto-scaling cluster workflows. For detailed information, there's a separate documentation specifically for HPS, as HPS is not exclusive to access on Microsoft Azure. You can even install it locally. I recommend looking through the rest of these topics. We've already created an HPS server. Now I'm going to show how to launch the HPC Manager web app and use it to specify a default queue. And then we'll talk about changing the default credentials. So to connect to the HPS web app, choose ANSYS HPC Manager and click Connect. This will open a new browser window and attempt to connect to the web address. If this security warning pops up, add the exception and continue. By default, there are two usernames that can be used to log in. It's REP user with limited permissions and REP admin with full permissions. The passwords are given in the documentation. I will not fully cover this uh, interface in this video. Just want to go ahead to the resources where you can see our auto scaling cluster by clicking on the cluster and then to properties, I can configure how HPS works with this cluster. We want to do is set a default queue. In this case, it's not required that we set a queue because in electronics desktop, the user will select the queue when they launch the job. If we had mechanical installed on this auto scaling cluster, we would want to set the mechanical queue as the default because as of now, it's not possible for the mechanical user to select a queue when they run the job. Simply save the configuration and we could close this window down or, or log out. As stated before, there are two default HPS users, an admin and a user. It's fully functional in the default state. You can simply pass the usernames and passwords to your simulation users, and they can use them to submit jobs and monitor those jobs. But most likely you want to make some changes. For example, at least changing the admin password, uh, possibly creating different user accounts for each of your users. In any case, you can do that all through the key cloak identity management. So simply select the key cloak and connect. Select administration console. Once in, change to the REP, and then you can see your users add more, reset their passwords. That concludes this video on creating a Slurm client VM. How to submit and monitor jobs will be covered under a user-focused video.